Welcome to Taking Over. I am Oled Ed Fries, and I'm joined by the one and only the natural Ash Bizarro. Astrid, how you doing tonight? Doing a lot better this week. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, it's it, it's been a rough couple days, you know, with with the with the tricks with the heel turn and the Trick Mellow Gang breaking up. But I'm on the other side of the Trick Mellow Gang. I'm I'm still dealing with another loss, but we'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> But, you know, we're moving on and we're getting ready to head into Stand and Deliver. Well, we got we got a little bit of a roadblock before Stand and Deliver. See what I did there? I see, I see. Roadblock. <laughs> it's always better when you explain your jokes. Yeah. And, of course, we've got Bobby Munson joining us. Hello, Bobby. Barry's <laughs> like, oh, it's, damn it, they're here again this week. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Barry. John Cena <laughs> says hello. He says, what happened to Booker? So... Uh, apparently you haven't, you didn't see Vengeance Day. Booker T had announced on Twitter before Vengeance Day that he under, had to undergo a medical procedure. He was going to be out for Vengeance Day in a few weeks of television. He will be back. It won't be a long-term thing. It'll be something that he does recover from and come back in the near future. He, The way he stated it on Twitter, he had had the procedure and was in recovery. So... We don't have to wish him luck in the procedure because it sounds like it already happened based on the way he worded the tweet on Sunday. This was an episode of NXT. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I mean, they came out firing this week. They heard us talking about, you know, about how we were iffy on some of these things heading into Stand and Deliver. And NXT was like, nah, nah, we've got you covered. Yeah. I mean, do we start with the beginning of the show? Do we start with the important segments? Do we, where do we go? What do we do? I mean, go in an order. I don't want to get lost. <laughs> go in order. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to try to trick Ashton. Apparently, I'm not. No. Good luck. Show opens, the show <laughs> opens with Mello coming out to loud booze. Crowd doesn't like him. There's even a couple, gotta of fuck you, you got a, a couple of fuck you Mello chants in the crowd, too. There we go. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, there's some F you mellow chants. Um, the most pronounced <clears throat> chant that I heard throughout the night was you're not him was the chant that I kept hearing throughout the entirety of the night. Mellow keeps getting ready to speak, but doesn't reminiscent of that Roman Reigns promo after he beat the Undertaker at WrestleMania 33, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And <clears throat> He finally speaks and he says, no, not yet. And he walks away. Mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> it set up fun, interesting intrigue. Are we going to have to wait to the end of the night to hear from Mello? We're going to hear from him at a random time. Is he not going to talk to us for three weeks, which is what I thought might happen? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen with that. So I was excited that um, they... The crowd were lively tonight. Um, and for once, they didn't get their own way. Um, unlike the crowds, they the only time I, I only heard one we want Cody chant, and that was during the playing of the video package from SmackDown. They accidentally left the crowd audio on and you could hear them. But other than that, this crowd wasn't trying to hijack the show, they weren't trying to do any of that. They even cheered when Ava was on screen at the end of the show which I thought was really nice considering the IWC has caused Ava to suspend her Twitter temporarily. <clears throat> She's deactivated her Twitter right now because of all the death threats and idiots that are on Twitter. And for all of you, I only have to say one thing. You're why we can't have nice things. All of you, all of you who do that are why we can't have nice things. You want to know why, they, why The Rock has to come back? Because of people like you. People like you, why The Rock's back. By the way, I'm very happy about The Rock being back. Fuck Cody's story. I don't give a shit about Cody's story. Give me Roman's no. story. No. Give me Roman's story. Fuck this Cody Rhodes bullshit. <laughs> Cody can no. go sit in the couch and cry for six weeks for all I give a damn. No. Don't give in to these little petulant children. No. Like a child. You tell them no, they're going to have their vegetables, and then you feed them their vegetables which in this case is Roman Reigns versus The Rock 
main eventing night two of WrestleMania. I've got dug in my heels. If they give in and it's Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns, it's a fucking shame. It's a fucking shame if they get that. Mini wreck. Anyway, after we have Carmelo Hayes walk away, we get the Wolf Dogs coming out, poking fun at each other. Um, Baron tries to start introducing them, and then Ron Brown cuts them off and makes that Alicia, Alicia Taylor do it. Apparently, Braun's a baby face now because he's telling Alicia, he's like, no, no, she has the best voice in NXT. She needs to do this. I'm like, when did he all of a sudden care what other people think and care about other people? Yep, that's new to me. <laughs> Barry Monkey, fuck The Rock, fuck Cody. We want the Vaughn story. We're getting the Vaughn story next week. We'll get to that a little bit later on today. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, this is a basic bare minimum promo that they want the family now that they've won the Dusty Cup. There's a lot of fun in it, a lot of jokes back and forth. But at the end of the day, they didn't do or say anything interesting. It was just a fun little segment. Nathan, they call out the family, but Nathan Frazier's music hits. And Nathan and Axiom come out for their tag team match. And the Wolf Dogs go on commentary. Astrid, I want you to talk about Nathan Frazier versus Idris Anofe and Malik Blade in a two segment, two whole segments. They had two commercial breaks. But technically, it's three segments. <laughs> Talk to me about this three-segment match. You know, I'm really glad this match happened because I feel like it made everybody shine. It wasn't just the like Malik and um, sorry, Malik and Idris. It just made everybody shine in such a way because it was such a fast-paced kind of match, and it was such a good choice to open the show. I obviously continuing on after what happened with the promos, but like you have the promos with the heels and you have them in a moment of a sudden this match happens. And it's like, at first I was like skeptical because I'm thinking Malik and Adrian is like, I know they're good, but they haven't had that enough spotlight. You know, they show us like maybe a match and then they're like off for a couple of weeks and things like that. Um, but then I like how this match really showed us who they really are. And I feel like Nathan and Axiom were the perfect pair to like bring out the best in them. And everybody did great. I really enjoy this a lot. I'm I'm glad this match happened, and I'm glad it was an opener too. Uh, I'm trying to moderate my own chat because I have a lot. <laughs> they want to offer them. you some services. Do you want their services? There's only a couple types of services I want right now, and that's not one of them. Anyways, moving on. I did, I did think this match was great. I thought this match was fun and fantastic. Um, I didn't think we needed three segments of it. I didn't think we need two picture-in-picture -picture ad breaks. But it was good. It was enjoyable. It was a fun time. I'm more interested in Ejinofe and Malik Blade coming out of this. Yep. But I kind of wish they would have won. <laughs> mm. Kind of wish they would have won. What what are we doing with Nathan Frazier? Is he a baby face? Is he like what are we doing with Nathan Frazier? For six six fucking months now, I've been wondering what we're doing with this bastard. Like, he's been on the verge of a heel turn for how long? Like, what are we doing? Can we please figure it out? It just felt like it went on pause. So it's like, at this point, you're like, we got a couple of weeks of this, and then we hit the pause button, and then we're like, this match happened, and you're like, okay, so what happened to that, though? It was like, are we done with this, or is this nothing happening here? <laughs> like, what the heck? It just feels so strange, because I'm like, I wonder if they didn't like the way it was going and they decided to like, let's just ignore it and just keep going with something else and the people forget about it eventually kind of thing. I don't know. I've got no idea, but I just, I, I want them to figure out a direction for Nathan because until they figure that out, they're just going to pair Axiom with him and do nothing. Like, unless this is setting up, unless this is setting up Braun Breaker and, and Baron Corbin winning the tag titles. And the stand and deliver match is Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Nathan and Axiom. And then Nathan and Axiom win the titles there. And then Braun goes back, goes up to the main roster. Baron goes up to the main roster. Because I'll be honest, as much as I'm loving Baron Corbin right now, I'm very much realizing he's not long for this NXT world anymore. <laughs> he's too, he's too over to be continuing to be flat to be here in NXT with us on Tuesdays, and I have a really bad feeling that Triple H is going to notice and take him back. After the match, we do get the beatdown from the Wolf Dogs. 
and the family comes out and they say next week. Um, and it, I love how Byron Saxton, fucking Byron Saxton, really, you couldn't find anybody else in the locker room to do oh my, What happened to Wade? He was doing so great. He doesn't have to be anywhere till Friday for for, for SmackDown. Is yeah. there a reason he can't be in Florida for another couple of days? Like, I, I, get, I, I, I get Wade not wanting to work with Vic. I wouldn't want to work with him either, but, you know... <laughs> At the same time, like, come on. But Byron Saxton, like, really, the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I feel bad because he was nice to me, but still, I just like, I don't, want, I don't want him in my commentary. <laughs> I'd rather have Booker T back. That's the thing I never thought I'd say. <laughs> I was going to say that, too. Like, <sighs> I love Byron. I think Byron's a great guy. I think he's delightful. I think he's wonderful for the WWE. I think he's an amazing backstage interviewer. I don't want him to hide nor hair near my commentary table. <laughs> because here's the thing. While Booker T is annoying and dumb and doesn't understand half the storylines that are going on with the product, you want to know what he does? He has an opinion. <sighs> You know what I heard the entire night from Byron Saxton? Well, I mean, I really don't know what's going on. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to feel. Fucking feel something! You have eyes! You have a heart! Say something intelligent! Fucking Byron Saxton. One thing I don't get too, it's just like, not only does it happen with Byron, but it happens with Booker. How do you put somebody in commentary who's, I'm like, I, I guess in character or whatever it is, even if it's real, when they say I don't I wouldn't have them say on like on live TV, I don't know what's happening. Because it makes you look dumb as the person you're saying this, because it makes you look like you're not paying attention to the product beforehand. Like if I were to be told, Hey, you're gonna cover raw tomorrow, okay, then let me watch raw the week before. So I can obviously refresh my mind on what's happening. Why would you say that on commentary? No, with Booker, he he doesn't say he doesn't know what's going on. He just acts like he doesn't know what's going on. I know, but still it's it's it sounds dumb when you when you hear it though. I, I I agree, but at least Booker T has the, has at least tries. Yeah. Like yeah, he can he get away with it. What, he doesn't know what's going on, but at least at least he pretends like he fucking gets it. He doesn't, and he, and he he tells us that he doesn't get it, but at least he tries. And but, but I'm not wrong, right? Like we heard Byron Saxon a couple of times, like asking Vic to explain to him what's going on. What are you not watching the product? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like it. Wade Barrett pretend like he'd watched NXT since he left. I guarantee <laughs> you he hasn't seen a goddamn episode of NXT since he left. <laughs> I, I know. Mean, either way, on. yeah, either way in character or not, it just, it sounds terrible. I don't like it. We then get Kelly Kincaid outside as the uh, champion finally arrives. It's about 8.20. It's about time he showed up for work. I, it's so weird, like, when they do these things. Like, I don't understand this. Like, we all know wrestlers have to be live like ahead of time for these shows. So it's not like it's not like it's a big surprise that like they're showing up to these shows. So why do we act like all the time they're just showing up mid show? I mean, we got over Carmelo coming in like almost around the time of the main event. And even but, Braun but, has done but, it too. But yeah, no, but at least with Melo tonight, when Melo came back, they were like, he's come back. Like, no, no, but I mean when he was champion he was though. Here and left. Oh no no I agree. It, it's, 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 it's always it's always yeah. been done. This is this isn't a thing that's new. This has been thirty thousand years of wrestling that I'm looking at and going. This makes yeah. no sense. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it it irks me. Like how hard is it to just say earlier today Kelly Kincaid caught up with <clears throat> Ilya Dragunov? We know what time they're arriving at the building. We had Kelly Kincaid outside in the Florida sun catching some rays with a kid with a microphone just in case somebody showed up. <laughs> like it's Florida in fe in February. I guarantee you it's not that bad out there. She could sit out there in her dress and a pair of shorts on a chair and just wait for people to start showing up. Well, if, if she if, if she is from somewhere, if she well, I don't want to say it like that, but if she's from somewhere else, like colder, yeah, she will be in shorts. But if it's me, I will not be in shorts. I'm just saying. Why not? It's delightful out there. Let me see. No. no. In the morning, it's in the 50s. Uh, 
I don't know. It may not be um, nothing to you, but it is to us, okay? <laughs> I mean, she's billed from Orlando, Florida. I can't do much more than that. Um, <laughs> like, I can't do much more research than that. We have more important things to get to. She <laughs> talks to Ilya, and Ilya says, I need to talk to Mello. <laughs> to which we then come back from commercial break to Ilya Dragunov coming down to the ring. <laughs> Astrid, do you want to talk about this first, or do you want me to? Because I have a bunch of notes. But I don't want to step on your toes if you have. No, 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 I don't have a lot of notes on that. So. Okay. <laughs> your turn. <laughs> Sorry, I had to cough. Ilya says Sunday he and Trick went to war. I don't just respect you, Trick. I like you, but that doesn't mean that I could let you slay the Mad Dragon. As champion, it's my duty to call out one person, Carmelo Hayes. You've been attacking me with false allegations for months, and now we all see your true colors. You couldn't see your friend reaching new heights, and you and these people gave it to you verbally, but I will break you physically, you traitorous son of a bitch. My favorite line. <laughs> it's all wrestling fans' favorite line because he used the word bitch. <laughs> it's a pop from a wrestling crowd. Yeah. But no, fantastic. And he's waiting for Mello to come out and Dijak's music plays. Crowd's none happy. They were hoping for Mello. They start chanting, you suck at Dijak for reasons I don't understand. <laughs> like, they don't like Dijak, but they've never been this, like, angry at Dijak before. Um... Dijak comes out and says that he isn't getting in front. By the way, this, this crowd did not help him in any way. Like, Dijak can cut a half decent promo. He's not bad on the mic. This kid felt like a. Dijak tonight felt like a guy in the first week of training school. I don't know what happened. It just felt so awkward. It just, like, first, like you said, I kept. I, t I told it to you as we were watching. I was like, when did this all these you saw chance came out of from for Dijak? It came out of nowhere for me. I never thought that would happen. And I feel like, in a way, even though he didn't look nervous, of course, but like, it feel like it threw him off. Because he probably wasn't expecting them to happen. So all you're trying to get him is like, oh, shut the hell up. And it makes people go louder. And I feel like he was trying his hardest to like overcome the crowd at that moment. And I don't think he was prepared for that in that aspect of like, they're responding me to this way. Like, how come? That's what I was saying. Is like, when did this come from for him particularly? I'm like, that's not Carmelo you're looking at. You know that, right? That's Tijak. Wrong person, people. Just in case. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was, like I said, it threw him off. And, it, and he didn't get help. Like, <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and say Dijak's a master on the mic. He's not. But he can cut a really good promo when he wants mm -hmm. to. Hell, most times he can go out there sleeping and cut a half-decent promo. But tonight, it was just all over the place. He couldn't get started. He couldn't get a thought out. It was just weird. And Mike's right. The, yeah, They couldn't find an original chant for Dijak, so they went to the default, you suck. Mm -hmm. It just felt weird because <clears throat> even as a heel, like you typically like the crowd wasn't, they just normally boo or they'll come up with something creative. Mm -hmm. They just went to you suck all of a sudden. They were cheering him the other night against Gacy. Yeah, it felt weird. Yeah. Uh, Ilya advises Dijak to get out of his way that he needs to make Carmelo Hayes pay. Dijak's like, no, you have the title. I'm coming for you. And Ilya <laughs> Ilya says that if you don't get out of the way, I'm going to make you pay, and you're not going to like it. <laughs> Dijak then punches him in the face twice, and he punched him right in the face. There are some great shots on Twitter of that video slowed down if you haven't seen them. They are delightful. It's not the funniest punch that Dijak gave, got, got or gave all night. We'll get to that later. <laughs> but they start brawling, and people come back from the back. And they managed to hold them back, which is always stupid when, like, you got, like, two people holding wrestlers back. I just, I know it's wrestling, but sometimes it just, it, it sometimes it's fine. And sometimes I just look at it and go, no, this doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Ilya killed it here. Ilya killed it here. Yeah. Which makes me wonder. Is the roadblock match going to be Mello versus Ilya for the title? Yep, I think so. I think that's when we get probably a trick returning, maybe costing him the title. I mean, we could still put the title. We could make it two-time Mello. No. Put the title back on Mello going into Santa <clears throat> Deliver to let Trick take the title off of him. 
Again, okay. I will not get off this. I want the title on the line <laughs> in that package at Stand and Deliver. I, I will not stop finding ways to make it work. And NXT keeps giving me that little bit of hope. They keep the door open just enough that I think I'm going to get that match for the world title. It's not going to happen, but I keep thinking I'm going to get it. Hey, you never know. We then get JC Jane and Thea Hale backstage. Riley Osborne comes up to... Uh, uh, yeah, Bradley came up to talk to them about going out for the match tonight, right? No, no. this was when they're talking about the like telling her to like, like the calendar. Yeah, the calendar yeah. being cool and all that okay. stuff, and the thrill, the chase, and all that stuff. Yeah, so JC's now, as our wonderful friend Shay said, giving her the worst advice in the world on <laughs> purpose. Mm -hmm. JC's purposely trying to screw up Thea and uh, Riley so she can have Riley alter herself. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, going back to how this works, put the title on Mellow, then have the main event to stand deliver be Mellow versus Trick. The only way that match is going to be. <sighs> I agree, but here's the thing. I don't know how you, I don't know what match you give the NXT crowd in theory that you put on after that. Like if that match doesn't main event and they don't plan on putting the title on it, then I would hate to be the other people who go into that match after that because it's never going to be good enough. Yeah, tough spot. Um, but uh, Thea agrees to play hard to get and she's not going to be at ringside for, JC, for Riley's match. Okay. We then get Riley versus Lexus King. Um, I put in my notes the entirety of this match might as well have been a segment. It did nothing for either guy. Yeah. Riley doesn't look any more the baby face for losing. Lexus King doesn't seem any more the heel for winning. I don't remember anything that happened in the match. Because all I remember is the entire match, Byron Saxton and Vic Joseph were talking about the ale. Yeah, I think the only part that's like that you can say like as a highlight for this match in itself is that more towards like the second half of the match, Riley keeps looking at the chase you corner looking for the uh, she's not there. But more than anything, towards the end, it causes him to get a distraction. That's why Lexus takes advantage of it for the win. And you can see that Andre and um Duke are obviously not happy that he lost. But even after losing, he's still like the guys are trying to hold on to him, trying to keep him steady after he ex exits the ring. And you can see he's still looking up, trying to find her in the crowd, and she's not there. And they keep pointing at the crowd that this is happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Waste of time. <laughs> waste of my time. <clears throat> Melo comes back into the arena from outside in the parking lot. I'm surprised he didn't get jumped. As we all know, the NXT parking lot is the most dangerous place in the entire world. Two people walked from the parking lot to the building and didn't get touched. It's a miracle. <laughs> Blair Davenport must not have been around. That's why. <laughs> no. We get a video package for Kalani Jordan. Um, did this do anything for Kalani Jordan? I was wondering why they decided to do this. Is at first it was I thought it was one of those like Black History Month kind of vignettes, and then she kept going talking about herself, and I was like, I guess it's not. And then all of a sudden, you see obviously Kiana and Izzy and the girls watching in the locker room, and it, it pans out to that scene of it and i get thinking what was the point in this like we already know who she is thanks for the reminder i guess i just it feels so awkwardly placed it didn't feel like a vignette for her at first <laughs> yeah it, <did. laughs> it would have been right there um yeah it just felt so awkward and then panning out to like the girls in the locker room and usually the girls in the locker room not only that i thought this is the first time i realized this usually the girls on the locker room you can recognize who they are and it's like oh no there's cool. a couple here and there the three girls that were there, I don't have no idea who they are. No whatsoever. I keep thinking, I'm waiting for Ed to message me. Like, who are they? And I'll be like, I have no flipping idea this time around. It's the first time ever. What happened? My notes, my notes say random girls talking about Kalani backstage until Izzy and Kiana come in. And then Brindley comes in talking about how great Kalani is. And they take, <laughs> they force her to give her coffee to Kiana. But Kiana doesn't drink coffee. So she takes the coffee and pours it in the trash can. But the trash can has a trash bag in it. 
To which I look at it and go, what kind of miserable bastard pours liquid into a trash bag? Like, what kind of level douchebag do you have to be to pour thought... hot liquid into a trash bag? <laughs> I really thought it was going to be like a protein shake or something like that. And then she mentions that it's coffee. And I'm like, okay, I thought we were going to go something like that with her working out and everything. Yeah. This made Kiana look bad. This made Izzy look bad because they're picking on girls who nobody knows who the fuck they are. It didn't help Brindley because all she's going to do is get squashed by one of them next week. Uh, I yeah, think by it's Kiana. Kiana. Yeah. Yes, Kiana. I honestly couldn't yeah. remember which one it was that got the match. And honestly, I don't care. <laughs> the match is going to take all of three minutes and I'm not going to remember it. Uh, Mike the Ref saying Kiana was trying to give her bagged coffee like we have bagged milk in Canada. So thoughtful. Ye I don't think so, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we then get Mellow in the ring. And by the way, when they come back from this backstage segment, this is one of the greatest shots in wrestling history. Bam. This camera pans up to this man who believes he is him with spotlights solely on him in the entire room in complete darkness. This is a mood. This is a vibe. <laughs> and that is how you present a heel. That's the heel that, promo in the dark we get. <laughs> but not only that, like it was the perfect way to go about doing it. It made him front and center. You couldn't see anything other than him. Which is exactly how they want to present him and how they want people to look at him. That he sees himself as there's nobody but me. Uh -huh. um, the only other thing you can see visibly on any of the camera shots is the NXT logo when they do the ramp shot and then the bright NXT logo with him next to it. Uh -huh. Melo says, you crossed me first. You were going for the North American title, and I was going for the NXT championship. You fell for these people. You believed the things they told you. You thought we were on the same level. We're not. I did what I had to do. Did I attack Trick? You're damn right I did. And then, in another side of Shawn Michaels giving everything of his career to the people mm -hmm. he adores, Trick Williams' music plays, and the first thing out of my mouth as soon as I hear the, the, the horns piping up is, Trick's not fucking there. But the crowd buys in, and they start yelling, whoop that trick. They're all excited. And Mello starts laughing after about 10 seconds of music. Um, It's all a mind game. And he says, you wanted to be like Mello so bad. You dressed like me. You wore your glasses like me. You slid into the ring like me. You did everything like me. But at the end of the day, you're just a trick. This was never a collaboration. You were just my hype man. That's all it is. And that's all you're ever going to be. Ooh. Straight fucking fire. The only thing that knocked this promo down for me in any way, shape, or form was Vic Joseph's first line of commentary after the promo ended. <laughs> and I'm going to a direct quote from the... Um, where is it? Hold on. I know I saw it. Where is it? Damn it, I lost it. You're not a Casanova. You're a coward. Uh-huh. Like, Vic, cool. You know what his name was on the indies. So do I. Good for you. But like, <laughs> but like that's how I feel every time I hear him say Casanova when it comes to Carmelo. <laughs> no. For those that don't know, on the indies, he was his name was Christian Casanova. 
He used to have a, a group called the Killanova Crew. Like, they ruined it. They tried to ruin it. Um, oh, we have another bot in the chat. Yay. No, I, I banned it already. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Mike, you're a trick screwed trick. He needed to know his role and shut his mouth. <laughs> we learned that Friday, I believe. <clears throat> We have Barry saying Carmelo is right. He's head and shoulders above anybody in NXT. He's too. I agree. Like, there's nobody on Melo's level in NXT, with the exception of maybe Ilya. Like, Ilya might be the only guy on Melo's level. Well, okay, Ilya and Baron uh -huh. might be the only guys. Like, because Baron's been here, done this for ten years. Like, Baron's at Melo's level or higher at this point. But Melo's Melo's a special talent. Everybody knows uh -huh. it. Mello knows it. He's not here because he needs to be. He's here because he's good for NXT. That's the only sole reason Mello is still in NXT. I think that they meant to have him here for a brief period of time, and then they realized when they were going to be losing everybody, they're like, you know what? We can build. Remember, 2.0 happened shortly after Mello got here. Because if you go back all the way to the beginning, we knew what they thought of Mello from the beginning of the thing. Because the first time we see Carmelo Hayes, I believe, is the time he does the John Cena promo back to Adam Cole and slaps him yep, in the face. Ruthless aggression. <clears throat> he then wins the breakout tournament and he's off to the races. Like, this man was destined to be a star in this program mm -hmm. from the moment he got here. Yep, definitely. And this promo just shows it. Because I think there are a few people on the main roster that could cut a promo as good as this. And it's not just about the words. The words are great, but anybody can write the words. There's a specialty to his delivery and the way he stabbed his best friend in the back that makes this special. But it's the little things that him, that he's down to do that I don't think you can just put on the people at NXT giving it to him. I didn't even notice it last night, but the jacket that he wore to ringside in the main event is a leather jacket that looks almost identical to the one that Shawn Michaels was wearing the night he kicked Marty Jannetty through the gla paint glass window the night the Rockers broke up. Tonight, the little things of sitting in the chair and just talking to a camera straight on, not yelling, not screaming, just quiet confidence like somebody like Jake the Snake. He just quietly talks to the camera with a cadence that makes you stop and listen. He didn't rush it. He took his time. And then the, the music. Yes, it's, it's, it's something that all wrestlers can do, and it's been done a million times. But the best ones are the ones that make the crowd pop, that makes the crowd think the baby face is coming out. Shawn Michaels in Montreal. Shawn Michaels the night after the screw job. He did it. He didn't do it once to people with Bret Hart. He did it twice to them. He <laughs> screwed Canada twice to that music. No, but, and um, even in the chat, as I was telling you, because I was watching it, I knew I didn't know if you were on time with me or not. But I literally sent you the message, and I went. I no, bet he's not there, and it's Carmelo doing it. And I went hot because he said it. <laughs> because he he started laughing about it. It was like the time it was great. Yeah, it it was just fantastic. A plus to the people of NXT for pulling this off. This was spectacular and special. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have anything else that you want to say on that? As I kind of took over there i apologize <laughs> um i know you're passionate about carmelo it's okay <laughs> um no but i actually did like the the line from big though the part about the casanova that made me laugh though at the same time i liked it uh but like, like you said it's like we have that and even somebody put it on twitter that like typical like heelish with the chair and the darkness and everything but it just like you said the way he says everything the way he pauses lets the crowd kind of react to it and then he says something else and continues on with it it's like he knows what he's doing and it's just so brilliant to see him doing this and at the beginning when the when i started watching the show i kept thinking they're gonna delay this as soon as, as much as they can they're not gonna give us answers tonight even though we know why 
but like hearing it from his mouth, I was not expecting it tonight whatsoever. I was waiting for like at least a week or two to like have him like tease that he's coming up but never come out. And that way, that way, when he does come out, people are going to boo him even more because we're expecting him to come. He's teasing us that he's coming and then he doesn't. So making people wait even longer is going to make people desperate. And I was thinking this is going to add fuel to the chance from the crowd. And that's what I was expecting tonight, too. But I'm glad the crowd didn't let go of anything. They kept chanting so many things to him. I couldn't keep track of all the chants they had at once. The only one that, that stood out to me the most was I like, screw you, Mello, screw you, that they did towards the end of the promo. But they did so many as the promo was happening. It was you could tell how just like the reaction from the crowd, it's what gets you more into the segment. Not only after what Carmelo saying about that, it had, like the, re the reaction from the crowd adds to it too, and I just loved it. One of the other chances you're not him. Yeah. One of the other chances they were chanting that I caught. It's the one that caught my eye the most, and even "Screw You, Mellow" was mm -hmm. um was the one that says you're not him. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely fantastic. We get the same promo from uh, uh, Sunday night with the three faces and nothing mm -hmm. new there. Literally the exact same promo. I was like, well, maybe they're going to add a line or something. Nope, yep. nope. It's the exact same promo. And then we get the recap of Roxanne. Uh, we get the recap of the next two premium live events being Stand and Deliver and um, Battleground, which will be taking place in April and in May. Both one on a Saturday at eleven thirty, and one on a man. WrestleMania Saturday is gonna suck for us. Yeah, be we're gonna order. Day. We're gonna order brunch around that time. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm having another brunch. I'm having another brunch. I'm having <laughs> breakfast. I'm having breakfast with Bobby for uh, Elimination Chamber, and then come Mania Saturday, it's gonna be brunch with Astrid. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, we get that. And then we get the recap of Lola fighting Roxanne and then Roxanne comes out to the ring and I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess we're going to have that <laughs> match now. Yeah. Great. But then we get an Oba Femi video package. And while I enjoyed it because it's Oba Femi, I have to say the exact same thing I said about the Clowney Jordan promo. Why? Yeah. It did nothing. This did slightly more for Oba Femi. Because it gave us a little bit more into who he is and what he wants. And he's, you know, they at least had some lines from him where he's like, you know, I'm here to take over. I'm here to dominate. So <clears throat> slightly more important, but at the end of the day, it was kind of a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But at least it was just a video package and then straight back into the action. Unlike they had to set up an entire staged backstage segment. Because you know those girls weren't watching that segment. They could care less about Kalani. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I like, like, I don't know why I'm so mean to Kalani. I think she's great. I really like her. You sure? I wonder though. <laughs> I do. I do wonder. I, I do have one question about Kalani. When she does her split leg and moonsault finisher again, are they going to credit, credit Naomi or are they still going to keep crediting Rob Van Dam and John Morrison? Because remember, when, they, when Trinity was in TNA, they refused to mention that Trinity did the split legged boots all as a finish. Yeah. Now that she's home, are they going to do it? <laughs> Speak of, speaking of Friday night, people being home, unfortunately, our home has lost one of our favorites. So, in honor of that, for the last time, we're going to play my favorite clip. I'm sorry. She will be missed. All I have to say now is it's tippy time. All I have to Tiffany Stratton is gone. <laughs> good, good for her. I'm glad she's getting a shot on the main roster. I watched her match with Mia Yim. There was a little bit of struggle in the beginning. They didn't quite mm -hmm. have a chemistry early, but throughout the match, it got better and better. It was a good one. She slightly overshot the B, uh, the PME. But at the end of the day, it looks like they're going to be building her strong. She got a big win to start. Let's hope that continues. Best of Tiffany Stratton on the main roster. Honestly, I'm doing anything I can not to talk about Roxanne versus Lola Vice. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say well, about this? Wait, you don't want to talk about Riley first and then Thea and then that? Just to make you feel better, kind of?
did that happen in here? Because I don't yeah. have that in my notes. I also yeah. don't have the Von Wagner stuff in my notes. I don't know where yeah, that happened in the show. I, yeah. Well, let me go back. Hold on. Uh, Vaughn happened after Thea and JC the first time. That's when the, the kids are okay. coming up. And they're like, yeah, do a tag team. And that's when we get a tag team later on. As I call um, it the Barry Monkey special. <laughs> yes. I'm surprised Barry didn't point it out and say, where, where, where the heck is my Vaughn time? <laughs> Uh, but no, this is the part where Riley comes in and he's like, oh, he's he sees, oh my God, that clip was so freaking funny. I'm sorry, I had to put it. <laughs> First, the calendar's been sold out. Now, tippy time is over here. <laughs> you know what? I, I appreciate your thoughts and my moments of uh, my, my moments of loss. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyways, uh, yes, Von Wagner and Robert Stone are going to be a tag team because the Bash Brothers said make it so. Yeah, but this is when Riley is backstage after the loss and he sees the uh, he's like, How come you weren't there? Um she's like, No, I had busy like business stuff to deal with you, like bad like grown ass woman stuff, woman, woman stuff. Yeah, you won't know anything about. And he's like, Oh, okay, like are we still on for the Valentine's Day thing? And then when she says yes, she's like literally jumping up and down and he turns around to like celebrate him for himself <laughs> that is still on. And then they leave and she, and JC looks at her and he's like, No, you gotta stop doing this. <laughs> I feel so bad. But then I can't I can't wait for JC yeah. Jane to break her poor little heart. No. <laughs> Why you terrible? Can't wait. Can't, can't wait. No. I also I also can't wait for Josh Briggs to take bro uh, Brooks Jensen and Terraman too, but we'll get to that later. I mean, we got half of it today. <laughs> Papa Smokes is here. Papa Smokes, you better get ready. Taylor Swift won her fourth Grammy for me, album of the her year. What? Fourth okay, Grammy I was gonna say. Okay, year. yeah, Am you're I, correct. I, no, I'm definitely correct. Yeah. I've seen everybody bitching and whining and moaning about it. Trust me, I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would too if if people thought that was the best album of the year. The bitch ain't she what album did she put out? I don't even know what album she put out. What new album did she release this year? It was last year in October, sir. But what album was it? Midnights. Was that new? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anti Hero, all that kind of music, yeah. I don't fucking I haven't You must have heard it somewhere. Before. I haven't listened to Taylor Swift music since she started shaking it off. When I saw the rock, when I saw the rock lip syncing Taylor Swift, I knew she was done. Apparently, she's not. But I was pretty sure that at that point, when the rock's mimicking you, that you're pretty much mm -hmm. over. I was, I was apparently very mistaken. Very. Um, she should be over. Not over like this. Not over in the wrestling yeah. terms. She should be buried in terms of wrestling. That's besides yeah. the point. <laughs> yeah, right, Mike? I know, right? Who cares about Taylor Swift? I thought she was done five years ago. <clears throat> so many people care about Taylor. JC's going to point out that she owns <laughs> I've been oh, waiting yeah. for this. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, we, we were caught up in the middle of it with saying hi to people and everything else. Barry's just waiting for us to talk <laughs> about it so we can talk about it. And Barry says, Vaughn was amazing as, as usual, outacted by the two little kids. By the way, the Bash Brothers are delightful on camera. They are great. And they do have more charisma than Bra than Vaughn does. <laughs> Anyways, back to anyway. women's wrestling. Something important. By the way, is this no. the only women's match in the... Oh, no. No, no. We had the tag. No. Um, what I will point out about this match, though, more than anything, is that how... <laughs> Obviously, we get how Roxanne's more aggressive, more pissed off about the match and everything that happened. And even the crowded Jeep tend to be aggressive. And it was so funny to hear that as the match is happening. Um, it's just the aggressiveness that we see and the anger that we see from her during the match in itself. I did like the parts of Lola that she came up again. She's hitting more strikes, doing more submissions. And I was like, finally, woman, we're seeing the girl we've been wanting on TV. So I'm glad that happened. I'm, I was kind of like, scared a little bit when she did the submission just a tiny bit because i was thinking that that's when roxy was gonna be done but i like how tatum came up with the contract distracted lola and it was good enough for the pop rocks for <laughs> roxanne to win it so very glad that happened oh that finished oh my that god that made me laugh yeah, but I, like, I wasn't laughing in a good way. <laughs> but even the, I, I like my my favorite part is like in the commentary it says, "Was she not there on Sunday? Why is she bringing the contract now? Like, why is she thinking about cashing it in on her?" 
We have bigger problems than why did she not see Sunday? One, she's not the breakout contract holder. It's not like money in the bank. It can't be transferred just by whoever holds it. Two, it wouldn't matter anyways. The contract's null and void because it was already cashed in. It's not like you could, it's not like if Damian Priest cashes in money in the bank, our truth can't then pick up money in the bank and try to cash it in again. It doesn't work like that. No. Um the match was fine. Um, again, I hate how they're changing her to the character that they should be changing her to, which is the MMA fighter. But for too much of these matches, she pretends to still be the old Lola, and it pisses me off. Because she knows what she's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Like, I don't mind the part where like she puts him in the corner and she's about to do the running butt bump that everybody apparently like, does now. I'm oh, Latina! Oh my god, her voice is annoying that... every time she does it. What did she say? She goes, I'm Latina! She's shaking her butt when she does it. Freaking hate is that, that part. Is that what she actually says? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could never hear what she says because her voice is too shrill and I don't understand it. Oh my god, I, just... I hated it. it. Like, her voice annoyed the heck out of me when I heard it tonight for some reason. I was like, just play done. <sighs> no, no. I'm done. We have an interview with Metaphor where apparently Ren is going to be destroyed and, and her career is going to be ended by Lash Legend. Um, that would make some people on Twitter happy that Lash Legend would try to end Ren Sinclair after uh, what Ren Sinclair truthfully said about Bianca's... By the way, if you've watched Love and WWE, Ren Sinclair was not wrong. Bianca Belair's hair is not that long. I've seen the show, or at least half the show at this point. <clears throat> she has hair that doesn't go all the way down the entire time. So she's not necessarily wrong. So lay off Ren Sinclair, people. Anyways, um, Lash is going to destroy them. Jakara says some stuff. I honestly couldn't tell you what she said. I think she agreed with Lash. She then says, Championi, you talk about it. And then I'm like, what the hell does he need to talk about Red Sinclair for? Uh, apparently, he was being told to talk about the Von Wagner Robert Stone tag team that they're going to apparently face next week, which seems weird for the chicken shit heel to be willing to just take the match. Eh, I get it, but I, I like how they do it like mockingly. Like, yeah, we're just going to do it because they're a joke and we're going to win anyway kind of thing. And you can see it in their responses, too. As if there wasn't enough people in this segment that I don't want to listen to and talk to and talk about. We then have the Candy Crew come in and talk about how they don't think that they should be taking the tag match and that they think that Noam Dar needs to be taking the things more seriously because the Heritage Cup is an important trophy and it represents the, the, the spirit of professional wrestling. Which I'm like, no, it doesn't. It changes the rules of professional wrestling. It doesn't take any spirit of anything. It takes the spirit of British wrestling. And if Charlie Dempsey were upset about it, that'd be fine. The rest of you jamokes don't much matter. Thank you. I was waiting. I was like, that would have been fine if Charlie has said it. If anybody else said it, it wouldn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And Dave Charlie should have been of all people. Yeah, I'm like, when he said it, it's like talking about like he made it seem like kind of like legacy. And I was thinking. Legacy of who? You? What? But, by the way, because I didn't want to listen to the Candy Crew, I was looking at the trophy a lot more. Did you notice he's put stickers all over the trophy to cover up all the other names of all the other no uh, champions for the Heritage <laughs> Cup? <laughs> when you get a chance, look back at this episode and just pay attention to the actual trophy. Oh he has God. stickers over every other name that's not him. Fallon Henley and Ren Sinclair lose to Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson when uh, Fallon Henley gets caught up on the top rope and Lash goes ahead and power bombs Ren for the win. Pretty much. Uh, we have Josh Briggs and uh, Dion Lennox backstage. Uh, did you? Did we really? Was there anything else worthwhile to talk about for Lash Legend? Like, I would love for Lash Legend to be getting better. She's not. I think Jakara Jackson has talent. I think there's something there. 
but she's paired with Lash Legend. So I don't <laughs> care. Sadly. <laughs> Can they can they bring Bianca down and have Bianca work with Jakara? Because then I'd be more into this. I like <laughs> Bianca. She, she's delightful. Well, I'd even like the old Bianca, the heel EST uh -huh. Bianca, to try to take over this group and lead these women to the promised land. Like that would be fun. I'd be down for that. It might actually make me like Lash Legend a little bit. Uh -huh. I'm I'm waiting for the next comment. Because I know there's got to be a second one coming because Barry says Lash Legend isn't mm. terrible. <laughs> and I'm assuming there's something else coming, Barry. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Um, but no, Josh and Dion are backstage and Brooks comes walking in trying to put the band back together again because he can't just do it on his own and he's sad and he's lonely and he just wants friends. Go cry to Shea Sawyer. She'll she'll take you and she'll hold you and tell you everything's going to be okay, Jen, Brent, uh, Jensen. It's okay. You know what I wanted to say to him during this? The exact things that Josh Briggs said, I hope? No, I just want to go cry me a river. No, be, be careful. <laughs> CM Punk might show up. He's been at the PC for a while. No. Barry, I'm not going to say it now. <laughs> um... We've learned how you talk, Barry. When, when you set up something by saying Last Legend isn't terrible, I knew there was something else coming, and I was just going to wait for it. Anyways, oh, Josh Briggs made my heart sore in this moment when he pins Br Jensen up against the wall, and he tells him to stop crying about it, that there's a PC full of guys who want your spot. So you can either sit and cry like a little bitch or grow some fucking balls. I was thinking, what spot is he talking about? Because if it was like somebody like Carmelo, I would get it. You would want Carmelo's spot. You would want Baron's spot. Why would you want Brooks' spot? I mean, because at least Brooks is on TV. Like, think about it. If you're is he though? Is he on TV? No, is he though? No, 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 no. Is he though? Not right now. No, no. <laughs> if you're in the PC. And you've not been on television yet. Like, hold on. I have to get. Yeah, to he hasn't been on television either since breaking up uh, with the girl. <laughs> I was trying to find a name. Stop. <laughs> Javon Evans, better known as Jay Malachi. He just started. Yes, but if you're a guy like Javon Evans or Jay Malachi off the indie scene, you'd want his spot because at least he's been on TV. He had a year long, a year and a half long storyline. Love storyline. Yes, a bad one. And at the end of it, guess what? He fucking learned nothing. Exactly. Hence why I'd even less I want his spot. <laughs> no, no, I still want his spot because he's still on NXT television occasionally. No, uh, I would want Carvella's spot. Baron Corbin spot, Dragon a spot. That makes well, more yes, sense to me. Everybody wants those spots, but those spots are reserved for talented people. Oh, not I know that. But I wouldn't want Brooks' spot. I'm not doing anything. No, He's crying have, anyway. Remember, if you have a minute, of, as the New Day has told us once before, if you have a minute of TV time, you have the opportunity to change everybody's perception of you. Make it count. If you're a PC guy who's not on television, even Brooks Jensen's shitty spot is better than the spot that you're in with, with, no, with no TV time. I'm just saying. I know. At no. the same time, I kept thinking of him in that like current state, and I was thinking, I don't want that. No, but I think you got you have to look at it as a whole. Like, like. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. Oh my god. That's my anyway. jump too. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov comes out, but first we come back from a commercial break with Ava and Jada talking backstage. Jada says that she wants Rizzo, and Ava says that's fine, but 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 if you want him next week, if you want Rizzo next week, you're gonna have to do it one-on-one -on -one and your boys can't be around ringside. Because the D'Angelo family is not going to be around ringside because they have a tag team match. 
My question. Why does it matter if the D'Angelo family is not going to be there? Why should that impact OTM in any way, shape, or form? Like, what does it matter? I, guess, I, I think the way she's looking at it is that, okay, I don't, I'm don't. i not thinking of the order in itself, but if we have the family having their match, they're not going to be at ringside for Rizzo because they had their match already. So it's like OTM doesn't have a match, hence why they have the opportunity to be at ringside for her. So they're like, if the, if the family cannot be there, your people cannot be there either to make it even. But at the same Why? time, I get thinking. Even? I'm surprisingly, I, that's weird to hear. <laughs> like, like, no, no, like I, 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 I appreciate Ava doing this. Like, it makes I understand why it makes sense. It's just surprising. I'm using, I'm using my wrestling fan brain and going. Since when does that matter? The yeah. heel group doesn't have to play the rules. Why? What? Why would? What? And when she, when she said this, I was like, I don't want to see this match. There's going to be a train wreck. I'm but sorry. I love, how, I, I love how Jane is like, you know what? I have confidence about it. She's like, no, that's fine. It works. I can do that. I like that. She has confidence in herself. She doesn't need, she doesn't feel like she needs OTM. She feels like she can do this on her own. That's, Mike's right. <laughs> match of the year contender coming right up. Not not not, not this match with, with Jada and, 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 and uh, um, Rizzo, obviously, but uh, <laughs> Ilya versus Dijak was coming up after this, and it definitely might have <laughs> made it last year on Match of the Year. We'll, we'll talk about that later. We then get Ridge interrupting, and Ridge says he still wants Gallus one on three, to which Ava says, Ridge, I can't do this. I like how Ava's showing the backbone. She's like, no, I'm not going to give in to all these wrestlers who just come in here and demanding shit. If they're going to do this, they're going to do this on my terms. But she has a good idea. And I don't know if it's one match or multiple matches. Like, I don't know if it's a gauntlet match. Yeah, I was thinking gauntlet. No lie, I kept thinking about my slobber knocker. <laughs> but no, I thought, like, really, I thought it's about going a gauntlet. Separate, it's going to yeah. Be it's going to be separate matches week in and week out. Well, I thought it was like... The like, gauntlet felt like more interesting to me because I think like as a group you like you want one guy after the other one to come up like that. Um, I so when I thought of it, I was like that 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 seems interesting to, to watch if that were to happen that way. So it was like her warning made me think of like I was thinking gauntlet match, and then I was like it doesn't seem that way, and I was like oh dang it, I really no, like the I, idea. I like the idea of a gauntlet match. Like I thought like I I loved it when she was explaining it like it's a gauntlet match, and then she yeah. goes, but if you lose one of them, it's over and done. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, it's gonna be three weeks of TV then. But I like the idea. You know what? She's really good as this authority figure. She's standing up to the wrestlers. It makes sense that she'd do it. Um, she's putting the heels in their place. She's putting the baby faces in their place. Like, you know, in this segment, she puts OTM, which is a heel group. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Jada, no, this is how things are going to be. And Jada's like, all right, cool. I get it. And she's fine with it. No, she said, I think thanks for looking out or something like that to her before she left. Yeah. Yeah, but but like she understood and she agreed. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't yeah. throw a hissy fit. She's not like, no, that's not how things go. <laughs> they do have eight weeks to stand and deliver. I yeah. agree. Remember, they they've got they they're building to roadblock. Like we keep saying they're building eight weeks to stand and deliver. They're not. They're not building to stand and deliver. They're right now they're building to roadblock. We've got four weeks till roadblock. It'll be a Tuesday night. It's a Tuesday night specially named NXT episode. But I like how NXT is like, it's just a kind of like a bigger NXT as opposed to this is where I'm going to get salty. AEW, who tries to make these things feel like they're a big deal. Oh my God. By the way, I feel like I, I also feel bad when NXT tries to do that too. Like, I hate when NXT tries to make a Tuesday night special feel important. Like, no, it's a Tuesday. If it was going to be an important show, you'd put it on the fucking weekend. You'd make it a premium live event. You don't just make it this, like, if if I don't have to shell out money for these shows, why not make them premium live events every month? <laughs> like, I get it if, if, if you were asking people to shell out $20, $30 a show. No, <laughs> no. Every week's not a big week in AEW. Almost every week's a bad week in AEW. Look at last week's show. Wasn't that? No, that was a good one. That one, that one had the... That was a good one. It was a week before. It was a week before that everybody who watches AEW asked him, like, eh, no, no, that's good. 
Atta boy, sir. <laughs> Barry Monkey still feels that Abe is awful, and you know, everybody's entitled to their wrong opinion. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but no, and then we get the list of matches we're getting next week: Wolf Dogs versus the family for the tag team championships. Noam Dar and Oro Mensa versus the Robert Stone experience. Uh, Kiana James versus Brindley. Uh, I don't know what her first or last name is. It's just Brindley. Reese. Reese. Oh, okay. Reese. Let's see. Don't care. <laughs> she, she ain't going to last two and a half minutes, maybe three. Yeah, and, we'll and, get we, and we get and we get as as my like to call it the m match of the year contender. It'll be <laughs> Rizzo and James. Rizzo. Yeah, match of the year contender. <laughs> Speaking of match of the year contenders, we had Ilya Dragunov versus Dottie Jack. This was fun. <clears throat> These two just put on a great match. Like, and I was worried because as this match was going on, I'm like. How are they going to do this? Because, like, Dijak and, and Ilya, the last time they fought, they had a knockdown drag out last man standing match that was violent as hell and, like, brutal. Not violent, like AEW violent, where, like, people are bleeding everywhere, you know, and things like that and drinking human blood. No, no, no. We don't need vampire shit on our show. But, like, it was brutal. Like, they used the things to make sense and they did the okay. things they needed to do. And I was there live and it hurt like hell watching the match live three rows from the ring. But, like, I just... I was worried how they were going to end it. And I don't love how they ended it, but I couldn't stop laughing. And we're, I'm not going to talk about the match, because honestly, it was it was fine. I want to talk about this. <laughs> and more importantly, this. <sighs> Joe Gacy used a boxing glove on a stick to hit Jai Jack in the face hard enough that the H bomb followed directly afterwards and put Jai Jack down. I don't love it. It makes Jai Jack feel a little silly, but I couldn't help but laugh and smile as I watched Joe Gacy. Do this, my man Casey. Brilliant, I love it. He's he's something. Uh, <laughs> if the fist don't get you, the smell will. We're gonna leave that be. Reese is gonna be like a peanut butter cup. She'll be she'll be so sweet beating Casey. Ah, no, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Reese beating Kiana next week. They wouldn't, would they? They wouldn't have Kalani like come out and <clears throat> let her get like a roll up win, would they? I mean, oh, why not? Let's, I wouldn't. Let's not, let's, not, let's, not, let's, let's, let's not think about terrible things like that. Uh, what did you think of Dijak versus Ilya tonight? No, just like you, I thought it was fine. Um, nothing, I don't want to say nothing really stood out to me, but it was like it wasn't a bad match either. It, I feel like it. it I like how they played off the injury from the match in itself, like the NLDQ match. I think it was the elbow, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, during like the ending in itself, uh, playing off towards the ending, and then that part with Casey just slowly just made me laugh, and he just threw me off of like my concentration <laughs> during this match. But um, no, I thought it was fine. I just like I, at the same time, I feel like I didn't understand why, in the sense of like. Okay, why do you do it Dijak now after losing like this? <laughs> but I'm like, I guess if you can add the injury part to it and, and the Gacy aspect as well. But yeah, that's the only thing I'm like, eh. I didn't like Dijak losing that way. All right, so we've got <clears throat> WrestleOps is reporting and with zero source. So I have no idea if this is true, factual, or just made up. And I, I'm going to lean towards being made up because. They have a second second delay for a reason and they were able to mute it all night for a reason um the fu mellow chants towards carmelo hayes tonight were strong enough to where production had to tell people in the crowd that they'd have to take the show off the air if it continued wwe has never taken a show off the air in its entire history like terrible things have happened in the ring and they've never taken the show off the air. 
I don't think these chants would have done it. They would have had to apologize and pay USA a ton of money. But I don't think that they would have taken the show off the air. Um, oh, goody. We have a clip. Uh, Astrid, you can go ahead and put that up <laughs> later on. Uh, Barry Monkey says, like the match, hated the ending. It was stupid. I really <laughs> hate that stuff. I'm fine with Joe Gacy doing silly, dumb stuff. I think that's fine for his character. My problem is, is this was a big match that could be a potential championship match going into Stand and Deliver. And I didn't like, or coming out of Stand and Deliver. And I didn't like Dijak being put in this way. But then again, if Dijak's contract yeah. is up later on this spring, there might be a reason why they're having him job out to everybody and having him look a little silly. Like, obviously, I think they're asking him and he's fine doing it because, remember, he was Retribution. He was in Retribution. He was T-Bar. Anything don't, that's don't not say that. Don't say that. Don't say anything that. That's not, anything that's not Retribution and T-Bar, I'm sure he's probably down to do. Because <laughs> anything, to him, anything's better than that, right? No. Yeah. Oh, um, the clip is this part for you, just in case. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Donovan <laughs> Tajik. No, he would go back to Don. Honestly, it would go back to Donovan Dijak. He'd drop the Djokovic and just go back to Dijak. Because that's what he was in Ring of Honor. And he wouldn't go to AEW. He'd go to Ring of Honor. Because, well, honestly, I don't think I don't think AEW is able to do with former WWE people anymore. Like it's in the, no, no, we're not, we're not. We're not getting me off topic. Mike, if you want me to talk about WWE talent and stuff like this on AEW, get me on one of your AEW shows. Anyways, moving on. Um, Melo then attacks Ilya after the match, after Ilya celebrating. Uh, he beats Ilya down pretty bad. He grabs the championship and he raises it over his head. Um, no, it was a good ending to the show. I like seeing Melo with the, with the championship. I don't think we see Trick until Roadblock. Which is obviously where we're getting Trick versus uh, Ilya. That would be mm -hmm. Il Trick versus Ilya 4, correct? I believe so. No. Because it's... It's the one after Battleground. And then it's... No, it's Great American Bash. And then No Mercy. And then they had the rematch on NXT. And yeah, this would be 4. Dijak would fit very well in TNA. I agree. I think he'd do fine in TNA. I think he'd do fine in AEW. They just wouldn't know what the fuck to do with him. As, as present by the fact that they have a kid who doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut as the trios champion, and he's hurting one of the brightest gem stars in that company, and it really sucks for Bowens because if Caster can keep his fucking trap shut, they might actually be able to do something with that. Agreed. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to see Max Caster on, an, I think it was AI, A1 Pro Wrestling or something like that. It was some indie okay. show this weekend. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My guess, what happened to Ilya? He won the match and he was lying on the ground. Carmelo came in and congratulated him and he couldn't stand up. Shameful. Ah, uh, that's it. By the way, um, I do want you guys to go ahead and check out Shay Sawyer. You don't have to check out. I mean, if you want to, you can absolutely check out the pre, uh, the pre show again for Vengeance Day because we had a lot of fun with it. But if nothing else, please go follow her on Twitter at Shay Sawyer underscore, or follow one of her podcasts at The Big Pop underscore. They do lots of fantastic stuff. They do lots of good stuff. Please go check her out. She is a fantastic person, and we are now on the hunt for our next co-host for a pre and post show and then we need to get a co-host for the post show Santa Liv is going to be a big deal i think we should get a post show co-host too i know who i want i know who i want but he's unavailable yeah. i wanted to get victor but victor's unavailable because he's going to have the children at Santa deliver yeah. so i don't think he's going to be available to go ahead and do that wrestlemania saturday <coughs> Oh, is A1 Wrestling? It's Ethan Page's promotion. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> that I, hurts me even more. I do, too, because I love Ethan Page. My guess is Ethan had no idea what Caster was going to. 
I hope Ethan had no idea what Caster was going to say. Yep. But can we all just agree that Caster just needs to get dumped from this group and just push Bowens to the moon? Like, Bowens is the talented one in the tag team. Bowens is the talented one on the microphone. Bowens is the one who doesn't know how, knows exactly when not to say the stupid shit that he says. <laughs> I haven't got a webcam, sorry, Ed. Oh, God, that would be hysterical. But who would be in our chat if you were here on screen with us? I learned another. I learned in another place that sometimes the people that you have week in and week out in your chat aren't good guests because then it, it brings the chat down because you're talking to the person who would normally be in the chat for the whole show. Astrid, where can we find you this week? As you had a, you, you've calmed down. You've, you've had your big weeks, and now you've calmed down and relaxed. <laughs> what is that supposed to be? <laughs> no I'm kidding. Are we are we going to be able to film talking takeover this week? Yeah, I don't see why not. All right, I knew if I could I'll, I'll book you. My, I'll, I'll book you in my schedule. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, the schedule I don't have. <laughs> <Because I'm... laughs> But anyway, um, no, I don't have anything else going on for the week. So that that's it for me. Uh, if anything, go watch my other interviews because I'm at 600 views now right now. I want, I want more. <laughs> um, no, you can find me on Twitter, Blue Skies, Astrid Pizarro, and then Instagram and threads, Astrid Pizarro 20. And that's it for me. Um, but I would say for those of you that can watch the Ring of Honor post show that we have debuted in this week. So I'm really excited about that because after that, we're going to work on other stuff too. We're going to keep bringing more shows. So it's just the start of it. So please support us. Even if you don't watch Ring of Honor, just at least stay in the chat with us. And um, we have brand new people that I would like to get uh, supported in the channel as well. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my Royal Bumble shirt. So um yeah, you can get that. I don't know if you can get them in the shop still, but anyway, you can get some other say, stuff they, in the shop. I was say, they, they couldn't see the shirt because I had that up. Yeah, you, <laughs> could, you, you can't get the I was there shirt on the shop, I don't believe. <laughs> but you can go ahead and scan this QR code to do whatever you want on the WBShop.com. Petition them for more calendars so that I can go ahead and get a calendar. <laughs> I think Mike got was, his, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> he did. He, Mike did get his. I mean, he, he doesn't have it physically yet. They'll, they'll be out in mm -hmm. a couple weeks. Yeah. But uh, he did. He did order his. And of course, don't forget if you want a, another type of T-shirt, you can go ahead and get the Ashton Bizarro T-shirt right here at this QR code. You can see the wonderful Mike the Ref up here in the top right corner, and in the top left corner, you can see the wonderful Mel from Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Make sure you go ahead and check out this week's Ladies Wrestling Showcase, and it's already over a hundred views on yeah. YouTube this week. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. I am proof that it works. <laughs> I got a calendar cool. with the link. <laughs> And of course, you can find me on Twitter at EdFries12584. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash EdFries2002, where I simulcast all my wonderful content that I do here on our local establishment. Coming up in the next week or so, we're going to have um we're gonna have Talking Takeover episode one. I think we're gonna do that one recorded first. I think we'll do a rival recorded. We'll see if Ashton wants to go live with it. We'll see which one what we just hide. But Talking Takeover is our next new show where we're going to be doing it probably once or twice a month. We're going to be going through all of the old takeovers and doing a retro review of them, talking about what we thought of the shows now, how they feel now, and then going back and looking at you know some of this talent and where they are and what they're doing. So it'll be fun to go ahead and do stuff like that. We're going to be starting with NXT Arrival, which for those that don't remember, it was the first ever live professional wrestling on the WWE network when it launched before WrestleMania 30, um, almost 10 years ago when the WWE network launched, it is now no longer here. Uh, it is now, well, it's technically still here for the crowds outside of the United States, but the United States, we now have Peacock in come 2025. All of the people who are on the WWE network will be moved to Netflix because that's where it's going to reside after that. Mike says he does love the WWE Network there. And he says, you need to do it live. How can I take over your taking <laughs> over if you're not live? Well, it's not going to be taking over. We're going to be talking takeover. So it's going to be different. You can't take over the talk about takeover. <laughs> but I'm also going to have a Marvel talk this upcoming week, probably sometime this week or next week, probably next week. Where we're going to be talking all about the MCU rebound episode of Iron Man 2. We'll talk yes. about Elon Musk. We'll talk yeah. about Mickey Rourke. We'll talk about Justin Hammer. 
Sam Rockwell is a star. Love <laughs> Sam Rockwell. But you can catch all that on Twitch at twitch.tv slash edfries2002. As Ashford said, please make sure this Thursday night, 1015, right after Ring Respect Radio, that you please give Kyle Sparks and Auntie Collins a watch. They're going to be doing our Ring of Honor reviews. I am very excited to see what comes from this. I'm definitely going to try to be in the chat for that, even though I don't have Honor Club, so I can't watch Ring of Honor. But these are two wonderful people here, new people at our local establishment that we can't wait. So if the support you show us, please show it to them. They are fantastic people. You've seen Kyle on the uh, ROH Final Battle show with me and Astrid that went into the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> I think we started the show, what, 1230, almost 1 o'clock? Yeah. We were on till 2.30 in the morning that day. Yeah. It was a late one. Fun times. <laughs> No, not fun times. This is why I don't review AEW. Because I like to get my review done by 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't like to be watching the show until 12.30. But I've talked for an hour and 20 minutes and Ash is going to start getting worried if I keep going too much longer. So we are going to go ahead and just say goodbye. So we'll see you next time. Have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs>